next project is Penthouse. Uh, lighting design group is LS Group. Uh, lighting designer, Elise Strieb. This penthouse was turned over to the contractor as a white box. Starting with a blank canvas can be both inspirational and challenging. The team worked together with the interior designer and general contractor to configure changes to the high decorative ceilings and the thoughtful approach to comfortable and flexible lighting. The lighting concept uses indirect light sources as much as possible. Lighting for the art collection, very important to the owners, is direct and designed uh, to provide maximum enjoyment. An advanced lighting control system was installed to allow the owners to adjust lighting based on time of day, event, or mood. Automated shading and drapery control is also provided. By using smart, thoughtful aiming and fun details for ambient and task lighting, the team was able to turn a blank canvas into a warm, comfortable space with just the right amount of flair. So congratulations to LS Group, and accepting the award for LS Group is Randy Reed. <laughs> recognizing one of our Tesla award-winning projects called Penthouse, located in Columbus, Ohio. Um, Elise Streep from LS Group is a lighting designer. We're also joined by two of the judges uh, from this year's competition, Jim Yorgi and Terry McGowan. So welcome, everybody. And so, Elise, again, thank you so much for, for joining us. And again, this that's mentioned in some of the uh, description that you submitted that you know, this was uh, really turned over to the contractors, a white box. So it really gave you the opportunity to, uh, to really let your uh, creative juices flow. So just, just starting with a blank canvas for a project like this was described as being both inspirational and challenging. So if you could talk about really the collaborative process, you know, the client, contractor, and interior designer, you know, what really contributed to the success of this project? I think it really was the whole team, honestly. Um, we had a great architect, a local architect, um, an interior designer from Aspen so um, that I've worked with, we worked with before, um, who brought us in on the project. And then the contractor was wonderful as well. Um, the clients were um, some of the best we've ever had. They were so excited about lighting and so willing to trust us to do what we do best. And um, they really allowed us to, to be creative and do fun details and um, kind of let those creative juices flow, um, you know, and, and coordinate well with the architect and interior designer to, to um, integrate details into the architecture in a really beautiful way. Uh, anything you could share like, as far as best practices? I mean, I mean, you know, you had a such a great process, but is there anything that would mean any tips or of how why it works so well? I mean, is there something you did procedurally that you would recommend to others? You know, I think it was a combination of um, the the really great collaboration with the architects and interior designers, as well as um, you know our coordination, the coordination on our end with the lighting details in terms of um, making sure that the architect understand, understood the intent and, um, you know, that we had the, the specifications coordinated well with the, the ceiling structure, especially being that it was handed over as a white box um, and a fire rated white box. And we had to kind of design within that white box, meaning the ceilings all came down. And so that gave us some opportunity to be able to do some extra details um, that, that we all wanted to be able to incorporate into the project. So 
I think just having a very detailed set of drawings and making sure that that was well coordinated with the architectural drawings um, was a big factor in this project. You mentioned that the lighting of the client's art collection was a priority. Uh, uh, is a control system for lighting the art only client controlled or is there some automatic component to this control system? So it's just client controlled. Um, it was really, you know, because this is their primary residence, um, we wanted it to be user friendly um, and they do entertain but they wanted to be able to you know, use different scenes depending on whether it was just the two of them at home or whether they were having guests. Um, and so we gave them the ability to really highlight the art with, with different buttons and different scenes on that um, lighting control system uh, rather than it being an automated situation. Uh, just, just a question. Um, I mean, based on the types of artwork, but were there limits on light levels if conservation was an issue? I mean, if there were watercolors, for example, versus oils, I mean, was that something that had to be taken into account? You know, we did have some filters that we used, but um, in general, we were, we were not too concerned about the light damaging the art. Um, you know, I, in the days of halogen, it was a little bit different story, but since this is all LED, we're, we were less concerned about, you know, the heat and the, um, and the um, you know, UV rays and all those that, um, that tend to damage art. Okay, of course, high light levels can damage too, but perhaps these weren't necessarily museum quality pieces. Um, well, they, they are, I mean, they have a pretty extensive collection of art. Um, I would, I guess I'd have to say that none of the light levels are at 100%. And so they, they live at a very comfortable level, um, a very comfortable dimmed level. So um, I know I, nothing was at such a bright level that we were too concerned about that. And finally, you know, what has been the feedback from the clients? I mean, it, well, obviously they said they were thrilled with it, but uh, it, is that uh, uh, any other details or any other feedback or any surprises, anything that maybe you had to talk them into that they were pleasantly surprised about? You know, in general, they are just the most pleasant people um, and easy to work with clients that, um, that maybe we've ever had. And so they were thrilled with just the, the entire design and how everything um, worked out in the end. Um, I think a surprise for them was we when we came at the end of the project and aimed all the lights for the art, uh, they had never seen that process before and they were shocked at the transformation by just aiming fixtures. So, you know, we always uh, say that that's the most important part of a lighting designer's job. And I think that those clients really appreciated it. Just one other question that I, I had before we, I turn it over to see if the judges have additional questions, but the pendants and how you came up with those designs. I mean, they are just so beautifully integrated into the spaces. And, you know, how did you, I mean, how did you come to those design choices? That was really mostly the interior designer. Um, she definitely came up with some selections and, you know, asked our opinion in terms of light levels. Um, we did coordinate the heights of the big pendants and the living room together. Um, but it's, in terms of design, that was that was all of the interior designer and she did a beautiful job integrating those into the rest of the architecture and interiors. So one of the things I've, I noticed is certainly there's there's a lot of nice daylight in, in the spaces and, and plenty of windows and things like that. And, and certainly uh, the, the daylight is, you know, one of the lighting elements and it appears there's uh, shading of, of those elements and, and are using uh, automated shading. And are you, again, from a artwork perspective, controlling the daylight to make sure you don't have excessive daylight, you know, uh, impacting the, the artwork? Absolutely. So yes, we did have automated shading and drapery. Um, and it's, it's Lutron and integrated into the Lutron system so that, um, you know, in general, when the clients are home, they, um, they manually control those shades. But when they are out of town, um, you know, it's an easy 
flip of a switch of to to close all the shades and help protect the artwork and furniture. You mentioned that that it's primarily a manually controlled lighting system. Um, did you incorporate any other uh, and and in coordination with the contractor and, and maybe an AV consultant, uh, any others like smart home, you know, in quote smart home technology. Um, so we, obviously the lighting and shades. I mean, I we didn't we didn't go so far on this project as to incorporate all of the HVAC and everything into sort of one central system. Um, the clients wanted to keep it a little more simple. Um, they are less used to a control system than some other clients, maybe. So um, we really wanted to simplify and make sure that it was easy for them to use and and not sort of overwhelming with every system in the house being incorporated into one um, key, uh, one keypad or touch panel. Yeah, that's that's a, very important, I think, because not everyone is up to speed with all that, that technology. Making it simple is, is the way to go. Absolutely. I was very interested in this because I do a lot of work for the American Lighting Association, which of course is all residential. And uh, this could be a cover shot for uh, some of their wonderful publications because it is so well coordinated. And I love some of the details. For example, it looks like the track is recessed. Am I perceiving that correctly? Correct. So it doesn't, doesn't stick down into the room and yet it's still very adjustable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love the way you handled uh, the indirect lighting, especially in that dining area and the room next to it. That's just a lovely way to bring out the, the walls and the depth of the space, have something decorative to look at. So as Mary Beth said, you know, it's, it's one of those places where you, you really want to walk into it and start living there. <laughs> It is very, it's it's so cozy. It's just the per perfect size and the furnishings and the finishes and just everything about this space is is very inviting. Well, it, it's, it's one of those things that doesn't come along very often and to have it residential in a winter, I thought uh, made, it, made my uh, time in the competition this year were very worthwhile. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, again, congratulations on a beautiful job. And uh, we hope to see more submissions from, from you uh, in, in future competitions from, from the National Lighting Bureau Tesla Award. So again, thanks for joining and congratulations. Thank you so much, appreciate it.